What's the worst part about being in the studio for you? The worst part about being in the studio? Yeah. What don't you like about the studio? I don't think there's nothing I don't like about the studio, bro. Like, that's, like, kind of my place of zen. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not... Only thing I don't like about the studio is when the shit is over, like running out of beats, or if the vibe is is off. But even I don't think it's no vibe that you can't create music in, like because whatever whatever you're feeling, it's just about reflecting on the shit in the right way. Like even if you're feeling low, then reflect on that shit. Like you know what I'm saying, go make some dope shit in that vibe. Like you know what I mean? Like like I, I believe the studio. Like you, but I go there, I go there and try to just literally reflect on whatever I'm feeling at the time. Like some mm-hmm. songs are gonna sound like I'm in I'm in my in my feelings. You know, I'm probably I'm gonna do some shit on that. But I'm talking about that so you gonna understand what I'm talking about. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like if if I'm if I'm amped up or I'm I might be just went through some shit. I'm talking talking about that shit. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's, it's I'm glad you it's, said that though man, because like, I, I don't mean to cut you off. I I'm glad you said that because even I missed this. You didn't said this probably two or three times during this interview. And I missed the import of it a couple times until just now you go into the studio nothing beat come on whatever the fuck is going through your mind whatever you whatever your emotions is that's what's coming out organic that's, it. that's amazing that's, it. that's amazing unless it's an assignment like we're doing like i said sometimes like if it's a writing assignment it's where we have a a beat that's selected and there's a goal we're trying to you know what i mean like then I'm going to write to the content. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I can definitely be professional, you know what I mean? I can write to whatever we got to write to, you know what I'm saying? But um, if I'm creating my music, like, you know what I mean? Like, that, that's the vibe, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. any, anything that says, and, and you'll, you'll, you'll hear that and you'll get that, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's no, and I think that's the most important part. Like, that's what's going to separate it, like, you know what I mean? Is that the feeling. Like, you're going to feel the shit that I'm saying because I'm actually feeling that shit too you know, you know what i'm saying like, i'm not just trying to convince you to feel it like, yeah were you um traveling and doing shows before this virus hit yes okay definitely was. so this definitely virus that kind of really slowed all of that down right now i feel yeah, fucked up about it. it i thought about that this morning because i'm like there's so many of y'all niggas that's popping right now it's like oh i know y'all all want to get out and touch the people man I mean, it did, but it also created a new lane. You know what I'm saying? Um, like anybody who's actually working hard and, and, and can release product, and pe- you got people's full attention. Like oh that. yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it, it really is. It's it's like a magnifying glass now. Like mm-hmm. so, there's nothing that's going to slip by. So if it's if it's if it's not what it's supposed to be, the people won't let you know. You know? This ain't a question. I need a snapback. Everybody come on this show. I'm talking to them niggas about merch. It's your right. turn. I was on your IG and I seen blue snapbacks. Uh, it had oh, NY. That's a story. Yeah, those are not coming. No, they Never. not. Never. I actually need to delete that post. I'm glad you reminded me. <laughs> was it bad business on somebody's part? Um, I wouldn't say bad business. Um, just. Another opportunity came along for the designer, and I, 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 I okayed that as a businessman. You know what I'm saying? So that's not like anyone did anything wrong. Right, you know? okay. I could have said, no, don't do that shit. This is what right. I'm about to do. You know what I'm saying? So I'm actually, I've been waiting for, um, I don't know if you've seen, but for Keep Going, we're going to be running um, some jerseys, actually. And those have been kind of on back order, like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I'm actually waiting for some, some basketball jerseys. And um, as soon as they get here, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll see. You know what I'm saying? I know, know they're going to sell out. And then you, you you had to also, I saw the, um, I think it was a yellow shirt with the with the animated uh, picture of you on right, it. Right, right, yeah. All, all I'm, I'm not all pandemic, man. Like, a lot of the distributors are, like, on pause right now. So, when we get right though. Just give me a, just give me a snap back. Oh man, when I got you, I got you. Yeah, you know that we got. I got new hat designs coming for the fall. They're not released yet, but they're already. I seen them. They're, they're in the process. You know what I'm That's what's up. So, I'm, I'm on here being yeah. un, 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 unabashedly fucking thirsty about the shit. On um, on the song Lenny, 
You said, excuse me, if I seem a little moody, we just lost Prodigy instead of Lil Uzi. So I, I have to ask, I gotta ask you this because I asked all the spitters, is the game being fucked up by cats like Uzi and Lil Pump and all these dudes? I mean, you said it you on the You know what's track. funny? I, I did say that. I said that in that moment. That's an older record. So in that, uh, how, how many years old is that record? You know, do you have a date on that? I don't have a date. date on it. Okay. Um, th- so at that time, I, I was hurt. You know what I'm saying? We just lost pride of you, right? You know what I'm saying? And um, a- as a hip-hop fan, like, you know what I mean? Like, I had a lot of resentment for those styles. At this point in my career, I don't know if I have that same resentment as a business owner. Like, you know what I'm saying? And really you know, understanding the music business. What you got from there was authenticity. That's how I was. He was getting a, a younger artist speaking his passion and, and the moment. And I, you know, and that, that's how I felt at the time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I would, hell yeah, bring Prodigy back for any any of these fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, anything that I'm not supporting, like, you know what I'm saying? But um, do I have resentment for those artists now as, as a, as a, as a, as a you know, young man trying to grow a business and having younger artists and people who are creating, you know, things that they believe in. I understand that the art is up to the perception. You know what I mean? And my fans, the people who support me, they ain't with none of that shit because I, I ain't with none of that shit. But shit that I'm, that my artists believe in, is I might not be a fan of it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I'm a fan of their entrepreneurial spirit and I'm a fan of their passion. And I'm a fan of them having their own fucking market. You know what I'm saying? So as long as you got somebody to sell that shit to and you love it and you at your A game, then I'm going to help you build that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I respect that. <laughs> don't, don't hate me for this, but you, you, you can't be the uncle at the barbecue with the flip-flops and the, and yeah. the sandals with the yeah. socks. No, that's me. Gotta, I'm the uncle at the barbecue. barbecue. Yeah, I got yeah, the linen yeah. linen piece. Yeah. <laughs> one thing I, be, I love about hip-hop is I feel like this is the one – genre and culture that 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 changes with time because as the it's, it was the baby of, of all music and um as as it gets older you get a new bracket of fans you get a new bracket of music but it, it's the only genre that's gonna it, it gets new brackets with age on the younger end and on the older end you don't see that in other music like you know what i'm saying like yeah. because it's been around so long so it's already established with hip-hop it's veterans are still alive. The pioneers are still here. Like for them, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it, you, you, you see all their peers are still going to support the shit that they want to listen to. As it gets older, the people in this generation are going to support the shit that they want to listen to. As they get older, they're going to still be a market. And guess what? They're going to be a more, a more liquidable market because they got, they got jobs. These are people with families and yeah. jobs and income. So they can support their shit. Like not like they could when they was, 18 years old and, and passionate about that shit and running right. around right. doing you know doing that kind of shit you know what I'm saying so you, yeah, you know, definitely man. like I said old, I'm the old nigga at the barbecue two piece linen yeah. and, 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 and listen and I'm the nigga sitting next to you pouring the henny man yeah. like, <laughs> Get off the, don't touch, nobody touch the grill, and we gonna turn on this Frankie Beverly, goddamn it! But you, but you go, you gonna see me sneak to the side and try to buy a from one of the young niggas. I'm like, yeah, 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 I got that gas, right? <laughs> so, that hundred dollars shit, yeah, some, some two of those. Hey, yeah, real talk. Over there smoke, and that old nigga over there smoking Reggie. I can't fuck with him. <laughs> hey, that's real talk though. I like that. Hey, I, I was looking at your off the top freestyle. Right. I was thinking, don't you think you would have been good in any era? Uh, I mean, I listened to the level of your work uh, with the pen, and I'm like, this dude could have been on the symphony. Easy. Damn, that's a, that's a, that's, that's a dope-ass compliment right there, Lord. I appreciate that shit. Yeah. Man, that's huge right there, man. Um, do I think that? Um, yeah, man. I mean, I think, I think I'm blessed. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, so if... if you know, and I'm competitive and I'm hungry. So, um, you know, you put you put a you put a hungry person in any situation. You know, they going they gonna eat. You know what I mean? So, I don't care who's around. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I feel like what I create. Uh, you might not think I'm number one, but I damn sure ain't gonna be at the bottom of this. You know what I mean? That's, that's all that matters. Nowhere near. Nowhere near. <laughs> Oh, I was just arguing with somebody on my um, and I, I want to say his name is MCK. If you're looking at this, shout out to you. But he came on. We, you know, this whole thing with the Griselda thing. I went at a nigga throat about the Griselda. Somebody else and came up months later, and they was like, "Yo, 
Grizel to this, Grizel, they not that, they not. I'm like, have you heard this song? Have you heard this song? Have you heard this song? They're like, nah, I'm, I'll be wondering what people be thinking when they listen to real good lyrical street music. They claim they support lyrical street music, but then they listen to certain people say, I don't, I don't get it. Like, okay, I told my girl, I said, back in the day, it was no conversation about who was, it, it, it didn't go back and forth. Like it was Kumo D, right? It was, it was, it was Big Daddy Kane. It was Rock Him. It was EPMD. Everybody agreed these niggas is is hard as fuck. That's just what it right. was. If you was whack, you was out of there in two months. Niggas wasn't fucking with you. Right. You know what I mean? And so, like, nowadays, not everybody got their little opinions they want to fucking throw into the pot, but where did we as a hip-hop nation get to the point where now we can't agree on what's fire? Like, no, no, Griselda's fire, G4 fire, Moose, Edo, Flea, Lefty, like, uh, Jamal Gasol, shit. All type of names I could be, I could be naming right now that's crazy. Uh, Milano Constantine. Right. People don't talk about it enough. I wasn't talking Planet Asia, guys like this. These is real true tactician type motherfuckers, man. It's like it should be no conversation about whether or not these niggas is, is hot or not. That's my rant. I'm sorry. It's, this is your space. My bad. And okay, that's all good, man. I, I, that was a beautiful rant, my friend. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, I tell you, I agree with that, you know, 100%. That everybody, hey, I don't mind supporting your shit because your shine don't hurt my shine. That's you know right. What I'm saying? Like, like, if anything, it helps me. Like, you know what I mean? It always helps to show love because, you know, like I believe in, you know, putting energy out, you get that shit back. Like, you don't look for expected returns. You just do shit, you know, out of genuine energy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, um, as you continue to put good shit out in the world, shit, good shit will come to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, and um, that's one thing about, you know, my brothers, all the artists that I do, you know, know and work with and, don't have genuine love for salute to everybody. I don't want to run a list down because I would fucking leave people off and I you know I want to fuck it up. But um y'all know who y'all are. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's a fact, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um I, I genuinely appreciate y'all because um no one here thinks that they're over anybody. Everybody's just working towards, you know, some type of peace, some type of happiness and creating some fucking dope shit for the culture. Like, you know what I mean? Like do it because you're passionate about this shit. No. You may know this better than me, because I'm still, the jury's still out for me. I'm making a determination. Uh, is this niggas out here trying to crowd this lane right now? Because this shit is starting to pop, and it's pretenders. Niggas that was out here faking two years ago, they didn't now try to slide into this shit because y'all niggas done made it popping? I mean, that's hip-hop always, man. I ain't never gonna change, man. That, that's always the temperature of hip-hop, no matter wherever you go to. It's always gonna be You're exactly right, though. You're like, you exactly know right. Like, so it, it, it that come with the territory, you know what I mean? Like, what's going to separate, you know, the, the work ethic, the work that's put out, the resonation of the music, like, and, and the resonation of the, of the person. Like, if you if you a good person and you fucking, you know, are about anything you say you're about, like, you know what I mean? The people going to see through it. And, you know, that's right. So, it's like we was talking yeah. earlier. It's like, listen, you could get the, the, the same kind of beast this guy got. You could talk about the same kind of subject matter. You could even try to be heartfelt and vulnerable on your shit. Like, but what you're missing is you're missing G4. So you right, you got to have your own fucking talent. Don't try to just ride this wave. Niggas will recognize and point out the fact that you're not authentic. We're going to find out. Cause Jamal Gasol, I got it. First of all, because we, we just got to talk about him. Um, I didn't know much about him. I still need to, and I need to apologize to Jamal because it was, it was people in my comment section and people on my live that was like, yo, you got to check out this Jamal guy. And it took me like, it took me about a month and a half before I even listen, this dude is something crazy. Jamal Gasol is crazy. <laughs> um, and so I apologize Jamal for being late to the party. I'm here now. Um, how did y'all connect? And and also, what song can you recommend for me right now? I should go listen to Jamal Gasol song. What what song would that be right now? Well, listen, I'm gonna tell you, go listen to him. Dump on my shit. Go yeah. listen to on the corner, like you know what I'm yes. saying. Like, but Jamal Gasol is from Niagara Falls, I believe. I don't want to be misquoted. I think from Unity Park, but um, I could be wrong. But um, you know, I I, I ain't I ain't born and raised in the town, but I've been out there for a little minute. You know what I'm saying? But um. He's from Niagara Falls, and then he's always like one of the harder workers in the town from his like from a music perspective, you know. And um, 
yeah, like I said, I always just see his work ethic. He works mad hard. He spits, he spits that shit. Like he talking about that, you know, that work. So you know, the more he like talk that dirty talk. So um, I always fuck with son like because he always did his own thing. He always was about his fucking business, playing to his own shit, and building his own ways. And then because of the respect, I had to you know call him in for a drum. And I still owe him a trauma too, too. I, mean, I know that. So, but Jamal, I ain't forget about you, bro, Lord. Like, you know what I mean? But I see you working too. Shout out to Piff, man. He got the Piff papers out right now. I don't know if you've seen the packaging. He got the mm-hmm. CDs and the Ziploc with, with the rolling papers packaging oh. on a million. Like, you know okay. what I'm saying? So, make sure y'all tap in Jamal Gasol, man. That boy working hard, for bro, for bro, man. And man, you work with Planet, Planet Asia too, you work with who's a, who's a beast. And um, legend, living and, legend right there, man. And, and PA, I ain't trying to do business on the video, but I love your work. I said that you, I, I said I had you right, Nas, and then I had Planet Asia right here after I listened to the Anchovies album. And uh, I've been <laughs> in your DMs. I respect you and love your work. Let's talk, you know what I mean? Because uh, he's the real deal. Hey, yeah, salute to the big bro, Planet Asia, man. He's, he's super solid, super solid, dude. The shit that y'all did, man, y'all didn't do That's one shit. of the best rap niggas on earth, like, ball for ball, fucking psycho, man. Right? Psych, that's the exact right. He is psycho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen Planet Asia right versus in the sleep. Dude, and this dude said, also, I saw on the interview, he was like, he could just go in and freestyle. If somebody want that work, he could just, he'd give you 16, like it's nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's it's impressive. He again, another guy that's on different types of beats. You know, he gets into a lane with a guy like G Four Jack, and just he went really heavy handed. I, I forget the name of the cut that I heard from y'all. It's a lot of shit in my head right now. Do you know how to line dance? Do I know how to line dance? Oh, like country line dance? No, no, no. Like Cupid Shuffle type shit. Oh. Um. The uh, monorail, Trans Europe Express. If, if I'm drunk, I could probably bust a Cupid shuffle out if it's a violin done. Like, I might, I might, you know what I'm saying? I might slide turn on your shit if we had the barbecue. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I might slide turn your shit together. Like, you know what I'm saying? If we had the barbecue or something like, but I got to be like a whole Henny bottle in before I start. He said a whole Henny of, bottle in. Yeah, like a whole Henny in. Then like. You know, you know, I see the lady get up with you. Know, I might go slide turn. I'm from all the way. I don't mind two stepping. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> the fresh, that's a Harlem ass answer right there too. I was, I'm told that you used to rap with a crew out of North Carolina. Talk to me about that. You was in North Kakalaki? Uh South Carolina. Oh, you was in South Carolina. Okay. And you was rapping with a crew in South Carolina? Carolina? Myrtle Beach and all that. Yeah, the Cheddar Chasers, man. Salute to the Cheddar Chasers. I'm actually executive producing um, a project with um, the youngest brother from that group. And uh, uh, my brother from Rochester, my little brother, uh, produced by uh, Tony Trouble uh, from Honorable Court. Um, so yeah, that's going to be like an amazing project for the young people. Like You know what I'm saying? Like, but that's not really your lane. You ain't gonna like that. <laughs> yeah, you ain't gonna like that one. Okay, just so you let me know ahead of time. But y'all rocking yeah, yeah. with G4, so <laughs> y'all good. I was looking for a manager at the time, like you know what I'm saying. So I'm like, I'm looking for serious managers, and and this is pre survivors. Really, like this is you know we talking back in the day now, like you know what I'm saying. But yeah. um, I'm looking for you know managers and shit like that, and um. I sent a message out just like I typed in the hashtag South Carolina hip hop and Facebook, like I remember. And um every profile that came up under that hashtag, I just sent the message. Boom, boom, mm. boom. I met this one cat, uh, Star, Starborn Allah, Queen, Salute to Star, God Body, and um he, he, he had a group. He was like, Yo, I want you to come work with my boys, da 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 the fifth. I'm gonna bring you down here. We got four shows, something like that, and you know, I want you to come, you know, come fuck with me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, cool. We'll see if you, you know, if you about that. Like, a week later, he sends me the, the ticket. You know what I'm saying? Like, no bullshit. I come down near Myrtle Beach. Like, son picked me up. Uh, went to the studio. I might have did five, six records with them, with them and did the first show. After the first show, we got booked for, like, three more shows. Mm. So we ended up turning that four shows into like seven, eight shows or some stupid shit like that, like in like four days. And then it was just like, 
you know, genuine connection shit. Like when you fuck with somebody, like you just mm -hmm. fuck with them forever. Yeah. Like that really wasn't my lane. You know what I'm saying? Like that was more me trying to find myself as an artist. Like you know what I'm saying? But um, the connections that I made with people were genuine. Like you know what I'm saying? And I did some amazing shit with those guys. Like I've been on to multiple major tours and you know shut sold out shows down like you know what i'm saying or some other shit but um even with that level of success what i discovered is you know you gotta be true to you and um that was me being hungry that wasn't me you know being passionate that was more mm -hmm. me you know going after whatever you know any yeah. opportunity motherfucker to try to change your lifestyle like yeah. you know what i'm saying like so um they had some big ass opportunities and i met them niggas out the mud so it was like you know what i mean like shit you know, come fuck with us. Shit, I'm gonna fuck with you. Let's let's figure it out. It was it was a developmental stage for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? And got um, you, got you. I say like, I, those experiences really helped help me who I am today. Like now, nah, I said I got a whole market down south of people who I've been been around, done shows yeah. with. Got genuine love for another city. I'm local in. Like you know what I'm saying? Like and dots are just connected. Like you know what I mean? Um, last time I did a show in. North Carolina, I was able to bring a nice amount of people out because, you know what I mean? I got my market down there. Yeah, so yeah. people going to show up, they're going to buy tickets, they're going to come out, they're going to support. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, that's, that's what it's about. You know what I mean? Just continue to build your brand and shit. Hey, you also said, I think this, this was on Twitter. You said, and I think this is very poignant. You said people believe in you until you want to get paid. Then it's who this nigga think he is. <laughs> hey, who's short with the bag right now? <laughs> oh man, it, it was a random conversation what happened was I think it was um um so with verses from me, like if you get a verse from me, you gotta reach out to Flip. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it works right now. You know what I'm saying? So I don't I don't really I don't I don't do any you know anything direct right now just mm -hmm. because um like I said, Flea is kind of, you know, handling the loyalty of that situation. So if if anything that's anything that's coming through for G4, it, it goes through Flea right now. So, you know, cats be reaching out about shit. Like, you know, I'm telling them, yo, you know, go talk to Flea. They go talk to Flea. Now, the energy different because you wanted some free shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I don't, you know what I mean? It don't be always like that. Like, I'm shit, I'm, I'm, I work, I work very, very hard at this shit and yeah. I put a lot of time in. So if you want quality work, you're going to have to invest in yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had to invest in myself. Like, I'm continuing to invest in myself. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So it's, um, one hand, watch the other, they both watch the face. Some people don't understand that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's all. I feel that because in my other life, you know, I do other stuff. And then people, I give them good stuff. And you're right, motherfuckers, when you come for that fucking paperwork, Motherfuckers wanted to all of a sudden act funny. But I also put on my IG one day, I said, you talk about how this, um, I'm bugging you about this punk-ass $5. But it wasn't a punk-ass $5 when you was in tears begging me for this shit. You know what I mean? Mm. You know what I mean? Respect, respect, <laughs> perception is reality, my friend. Niggas act real funny about when it comes to the fucking bread. And you write niggas like, who this nigga think he is? I think I'm the nigga that you asking for a product or a service from. And I expect to get fucking compensated. Just like you get compensated for the shit that you do. You went to school very close to Ground Zero, right? The closest school to Ground Zero. And you were in school when the planes hit the towers. I was. Um, first of all, take me through that day and what happened when, when all that went down. You was in school. Take me, take me from that point when you realized that something is going down. No, oh, man. Um, <laughs> cutting class we was in the auditorium me my man Vinny Ty Kid I forget who else was there but I remember Vinny was there because he had a next cell phone off the top of my head and um, he's getting a chirp from his mom his mom's going crazy oh, come on come on come on what the fuck what's wrong with your mom's what's your mom's working out he told me his mom's on the next tell because no one on cell phones working. We didn't even realize that shit. Like, yo, like, we all got phones and shit. But um, you know, we was we was, you know, we was active, you know, back in the day. You know what I'm saying? And um and only the next tells was working, only the fucking radio, the church shit. So, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, you know, nobody else just was working. Like, you know what I mean? 
And um, she like, yo, she said something about a helicopter in the building. She think a helicopter in the building, something, something. But she ain't have no direct information. She was just going crazy, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're talking, I'm telling this nigga, leave the school, leave the school, leave the school. He walked off. Then we went upstairs. Everybody lined up against the walls. It should look like a war. Is like, it looked like some weird shit. Like, no, I don't know. Like, we was cutting class. So we had no idea what was going on. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we're actually hiding from everybody. We in our know, tour. We ain't supposed to be here. We doing all kinds of dumb shit. Um, looked up. We like a block away. We 100 Trinity Place. And if you anybody want to Google where the school is at, it's high school for economics and finance. The address is 100 Trinity Place. Uh, connected to Leadership High School, which is across the street, but in proximity to the you know World Trade Center, there would be you know one block here. Leadership is across the street. Anyone who goes to school in New York City, they're gonna be able to you know you verify what I'm talking about. But um, we fucking uh looked up. Cops is like, I got a I got to move. My fucking building start coming down. We was we was still there, like you know what I mean. But we was on the other side of the building. So we wasn't like it, we had to run towards the water, like you know what I'm saying, like because we was on the downtown side, like, you know what I mean. So we Did you hear explosions? Sport. Nah, we heard the the second plane hit. We we felt that shit. That shook the whole building. Like that was some weird shit. Like that that shook it. Like you know what I mean. The first plane hit. We didn't, we didn't really notice it, but we also was like on the first floor and all the tour wasn't the window. It was like we was low, like you know what I'm saying. So. We could have missed it. Like, I don't know. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Because like, I'm know, thinking about the aftermath of it, like, right before the buildings came, because I've heard reports. But... but when the second plane hit, yeah, that, that shit definitely, because we was like, we was about to go upstairs. So when the second plane hit, like, it was like, I remember the whole window, like, turning on, like, paper. Like, you know, that shit was like, moving, like, shit crazy. And then shit, oh, you see, wow, shit fly past. Like, so we was, we was, like, ran upstairs and all that and all um, Niggas, oh, it's wild shit happening right now. My man came. I remember my man came late. <laughs> that nigga was in the World Trade Center with his. <laughs> what? Yeah, this motherfucker late to school. <laughs> he got wild ashes on his hat talking about, yo, it looked like it was snowing outside. Yo, niggas was crying. I'm like, yo, this. <laughs> 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 I remember salute to Ray L, man. Yo, he was in my last video, make a plate. That's my son that's in the last video with the red shirt. Hey, make a he plate is so him. dope, yo. Make a yeah, plate. You used dope. to call him Rage the Dawn. Like, I swear to God, son is like a, a computer programmer now. You know, like, different kind of, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Genius now. Like, but um, I remember he came in and said, the, the crispy black fitted to such that wow ass. It's so, so, like it's snowing outside. He was dead tight. Came back out. That's when that first building came down. We started burning it. Boom! Started running. So we running from the running from the building, bro. You got a, like a, a Survivor series thing that do you release on nine eleven? I drop a project every nine eleven. You know, what I mean? um, last year I dropped the Forgotten Ones, and um, uh, it's just you know, it's just a, it's just my deal. You know, what I mean, I just it's just what I do. You know, what I mean, like it's not. Like the survivors, it's not my, my entire catalog would be the series. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. What you're talking about. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like it's, it's my it's my my story is continuous, no matter you know. But I do have you know a couple of dates that I always try to drop around. Like I always drop the first week of January, um, because that's significant. That's what like when my when my grandmother passed away. So I always drop like the first week of January. I always drop nine eleven. You know what I'm saying? Like I mean, so. Usually drop last week of May, first week of June, somewhere. All my dates are significant to my life. They're not like, you know what I'm saying? They're not random. They're like gotcha. all, all, yeah, all, the, all the release dates matter. They, they, they matter to me. And that's that's one thing about the Fly Family brand. Um, if you know, like even with my artists, with biz, I tell people, um, you know, with your music, you're creating a legacy. So um, your date got to matter to you. You know what I'm saying? And um. It's more than just a business plan. It's more than just a chess move where you're trying to, you know, outdo everybody. It's like the only competition should be the man in the middle, you know, first and foremost, you know what I mean? And, um, Didn't the famous album get released on 9 11? A couple albums got released on 9 11, I believe. Blueprint got Cold released? Drop, yeah, Fab dropped that day too. I remember it was like a Brooklyn thing. Fab, they, they dropped 9 11 when the towers dropped. Hold and Fab dropped that day. At least somebody else did, too, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember who it was. It was somebody else. But I know Hove and Fab, I believe, both dropped that day. And I'm not going to say nothing about the Blueprint cover. 
<laughs> Nothing at all. Um, oh, you said all these rappers is liars on a song. You said all these rappers is liars. The song is called Jesse Smollett. <laughs> Sounds like ah. you, got, oh, you got strong feelings. Please elaborate. Please. Oh, uh, man. I just said, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's a lot of, a lot of, you know, I, I let people paint their pictures, man. I paint mine. I, when you listen to my music, you're going to get my feelings and the authenticity. You know what What's they lying about? Listen, I don't, I don't know. Listen, you got to ask, you got to interview them, Mike. I don't, you got to talk to got this a bit. We about to have a moment on the Mike Power Show. God damn it, I'm a you journalist. Talk to them niggas. <laughs> you said, it's right here on the paper, G4. It's right here on Rat the paper. Niggas is all liars. Just I got it in quotes. I told Emotional. I Sound like my daughters. Give them the ball reps. Keep on going. I'm, go ahead. I'm going to hear the let Can we hear the verse? Can we please get a verse? Talk to them. <laughs> nah, I ain't giving y'all no verse today. <laughs> but nah, listen, that's, that was the energy of that record. Like when I did that record, like I said, whenever I go into the booth at that moment, it's what, it's what was happening at the time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so when I did. It just a small act. I, I'm poor, you know what I'm saying? When I did that record, though, you know what I mean? Um, it was, it was, it was, it was the vibe at the time. It was some things that was rubbing me the wrong way for us, like you know what I mean? So it's, 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 you gotta, I gotta reflect on that, you know what I mean? Like I'm gonna be a, I'll tell you right now, like I ain't worth making nobody famous, so, you know what I mean? Like, I ain't no reason for that. Like I, I, I'd rather you build your brand, you know what I mean? Like. Especially if you look like me, I don't got nothing to cut your legs off, brother. Do the thing. Real you know talk, saying? real talk. Hey, I'm gonna um, do my thing, though. You know what I mean? And yeah, I, you know what I, mean? I got you. We almost had a controversial moment. It didn't happen. But <laughs> nah, listen, I'm, gonna tell no, you like I'm just, I'm I just do, playing I with. I'm sort of kind of just playing with you. Nah, it's all good. It's all good. Listen, I tell you, like, listen, I, I like authenticity. So you had some real shit, and like, like I said, the reality, the fact is, like, um. I'm going to always be honest in what, what, what I'm saying in my music. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, at that moment, like, that shit, that's what was needed to be said. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's that simple. And before we started this whole thing, we, we, we was talking, before the official interview started, we was talking about Steelmatic. I, right. I wrote a note about it. Can you just talk to me about what Steelmatic means to you, the impact of that album, Nas? Man, so that's actually my favorite Nas album um, to date. Which is, you know, I know people are gonna be mad. You know, I'm gonna get the Nas fan. You know, they're gonna cut me up for that. But um, because what I feel about music is it has to resonate with the experience of your life. So the thing about Stillmatic for me, for G4 Jag, when that album came out at that point in my life, that album was everything for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like because of what I was experiencing and what Nas was talking about, I was airing his circle loud and. He was, you know, really coming into, like, not coming into, but just, you know, redefining his greatness, like, as an artist. And, like, you know, he was going to war with, you know, Hove. And, like, you know, he was really, he, 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 was, he, was, shaking, he was shaking some shit up. Like, you know what I'm saying? He was in the process of shaking some things up. Like, you know what I mean? So, like, at that point in his career, like, I just thought that shit was fucking dope. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, um, there's just so many records on that on that on that project that like second childhood. I feel like every every record every record is not a second childhood is amazing you know what I'm saying like it, it's it's every record though no ideas original jewel, like you know what I mean like yeah type shit it's a jewel like, you know yeah I, mean? and, um, yeah. I, I, I honestly like that, that's one of my favorite albums today got yourself a gunners on that album too right I think yep absolutely Ooh, number two or something what he did to that fucking Ooh. beat. And then he, when he went off, and he had so many, it's so many jewels on there. Well, that album has one mic, bro. Like, one mic is on. Come on, son. Like, what are we talking? Like, about? A, a, a song in hip hop that nobody in hip hop could ever be better than. You could get up to that level, you will never be better than one mic. Just never. Like that's one of them songs that's just like it don't matter what, who you who you're a fan of, what you like. That's just one of them songs. Like it's like when, when somebody do shit like that, you just got to get credit with this dude. Absolutely. I think Rewind is on there too, right? Rewind. Absolutely. Shit. But when like I said, when on uh, on um amazing, it just, Yeah, when he said on on when he said um what did he say? 
the kid rocking limp biscuits off. I just like the way he did that. That shit was kind of like <laughs> sick. Sick looks sick up in that box the Porsche with the top cut off. Rich kids going cop the source. They don't know about the blocks I'm on. Come on now. Hey, if you had to take an eight hour drive and could only listen to one artist the entire ride, who would you choose? And I got a list. This is multiple choice. Okay. You can listen to one of these okay. for the entire eight hour ride. Parliament Funkadelic, Stevie Wonder, Prince, or Michael? Mike. That's an easy choice for me. I'm a, I'm a dude. Very few people is a bigger Mike fan than me. Love Mike Jackson. Come on now. Yeah, now I, I'm not even the biggest Mike fan in my family. My little brother is, but hmm. it, it's, 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 it's that, that, like I said, that's an easy choice for me, though. Like, you know what I mean? What Mike does, what Mike did. Like musically is incredible. You know I mean? like, now you want to talk about mother shit about my guy? You know, I don't want to talk about. It. No, I'm, <laughs> listen, niggas need to stop. I think people should stop saying goofy shit. Like right. we can talk about that later on. Let's let, let's just get into some serious shit. Yeah. Do you think you could beat me in a a wing eating contest? Absolutely. Ain't no fucking way. No way. Absolutely. I, listen, I lived in Buffalo. Like I said, almost fifteen years. Shout out to Dougie, Niagara Falls, man. I'll send me stuffing the shelves and the wings up. But I love chicken wings, and I'm a fat nigga. You know what I mean? Wings and sushi, I'm kind of like garly in them areas. Like, I'll, do, I, I, I'll do 50 wings inside of like six minutes. No problem. Six minutes, that's different. I ain't even going to lie. That's I mean, I, you ain't got to do it, but I'm just six saying. Six minutes? You ain't clear 50 in six minutes, bro. They gonna have to okay, you right. You right. Bro. Okay. You I'm fronting right this. now. You not. You fronting right now. I, listen, like, you my man. I gotta keep it honest with you. Okay. You I have to, all right, it's all not right. honest. It's not honest. Like, okay. That's what do. So no, no if time limit. All drums, maybe, maybe. I would think <laughs> maybe it can get done. But with flats too, you got the bones pause and all that. Nah, bro. Nah, nah. Listen. So, so I mean, when I, I come to Harlem, because I'm I'm gonna go to Harlem. When I come to Harlem, wherever you at, because you all over the place. You might be in Niagara. You might be in Rochester. One wherever you at. I'm when it's time for me to go. I'm coming. We sitting down. We filming it. And I say, you gonna tap out, and I'm still gonna be eating wings. Nah, that's not gonna happen. I promise you, that's not gonna happen. Especially now if I'm high, and that's I'm always high. I'm Mr. Mimi in the sky. So like. I'm, I'm smoking weed right now the whole time while we talking. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no way on God's green earth that's going to happen. And I'm accepting that challenge. <laughs> hey, I need cats in the comment section to tell me who you got on this. Because I've never actually been in a wing eating contest. I be wanting to challenge people all the time. G4 seemed like a dude that I should probably bring this to. Um, and I feel like if I take G4 down in a wing eating contest, nobody ain't going to want to fuck with me after that. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Take him out. Uh, I don't think it's, listen, it, listen, it, it's going to be good for the brand, you know what I'm saying? But y'all going to see that I am loyal to this fat nigga shit more than I should be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's, oh. and that's just the facts written in this story. I just challenged you know G4 Jack, but I kept it safe. I made sure that everybody, <laughs> no bodily harm will come to no. <laughs> I, I don't want to see him on the bars. You know what I mean? But I do want to see him on the wings. On the song Still Standing, the chorus talks about how you still surviving. Um, take me inside what the concept of survival uh, is about for you. Um, for me, it's, it's about remaining a provider and a protector. Like I said, I'm a father first. So, like, you know what I mean? For me, like, I got four kids. Salute to my, my babies. Uh, I got twins, Lyric and Melody. Hmm. I got um, and my older kids, John Jr. and Desiree. Yes. Um, so for surviving for me is just making sure that them, them place is fed and it's a roof over their head. Like, you know what I mean? So um, as long as I'm fitting that bill consistently under all circumstances, and they don't feel nothing from me. Do you have a favorite memory from a show you have that you did before? Mm. Something that stands out in your mind, or maybe a reaction from a crowd. Maybe somebody threw some panties up there or something. Nah. <laughs> I remember this is an old, old show. Um, I did Day Summit. We were doing a, um, a competition, which is Connecticut. It's like some, some showcase shit. But um, Connecticut artists have been like coming up there fucking 
chilling the stage. You know what I'm saying? But they was all doing like, you know, kind of that new style shit and all that. Like, you know what I mean? But they, they, they kind of bring a heavy stage presence. They was doing the thing. Like, you know what I mean? Judges was feeling this shit. And um, I kind of went up there and and I, I went bananas. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, one thing with shows is I like to say I'm, I'm, I, I'm when when need be I'm, I can control the crowd like you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying so mm-hmm. it's it's that was one of the moments where it was like they like I kind of floored the room like, you know what I'm mean? saying like, it was like I had the entire you didn't even want to be there with me you were there with me you had no choice you know what yeah what I'm and, uh, that was a very very memorable moment because it was like it was just like having the crowd in your hand like you know what I mean I literally like jumped off the stage in the middle of the performance like, just, like, that was, but, um, this wasn't this wasn't like stage down when they was carrying. You just jumped off the stage and got no, no. I jumped off in the middle of the crowd and like started okay. jumping around with them and shit. Like, yeah, you know, I don't. I'm too big to be stage diving. No yeah, somebody gonna die. I'm gonna have a yeah. liability. <laughs> you, need about eight, about, you need about 15 niggas my size to catch you. Right, you right. Nah, I ain't, jump, I ain't jumping on the motherfucking stage. I, I ain't even trusting that shit. Like, nah, man. Who used to? But I will. I, what I, fat I, nigga I, did I, that before? The action do that? I don't know. I think action did that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's not for G4. Yeah. To each his own, but that is not for G4. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I already, uh, on my philosophy, you said RIP to Wayne Lowe and Broadway. I hope I said those names correctly. Wayne uh, Loke and Broadway. Wayne, Wayne Loke and Broadway? Yes. Okay. And uh, those sound like probably homies that you that you lost along the way um i think sometimes people hear names shouted out but it's it's really not real to them when they hear it can you add some context for me about these people what they meant to you oh man yeah absolutely thank you for asking that that's real shit um wayne Loke was my brother i mean really um him and call was like you know best friends like forever type shit like they for everybody you know we, we, we all from 115th, and um, that's where we all, you know, congregate at. I say that, like, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, we came to an untimely demise, you know, in, in my neighborhood, 124th for St. Nick. Got, got, you know, seven put in it. And um, unfortunately, you know, that is, you know, the mind that was whack. And then uh, my brother Broadway, that same year, I want to say maybe a couple of weeks later, this is all last year, matter of fact, 2019. A couple of weeks later, um, he passed away um, in his crib um, due to some, he had a heart attack, some complications, some mm-hmm. medical complications, but um, kind of just found a homie kind of dead in his crib. So, yeah, RP to those guys, man. It was great, great fucking dudes, like, you know what I'm saying? And um, Warriors, for real, for real, you know. You know, they will be missed, you know what I'm saying? But, like, yeah, those are my brothers, you know what I mean? And forever my brothers. You know I mean? And do you, of course, have my condolences, you know what I mean? That, Lord. you lost some yeah, people yeah, yeah. that was close to you. And um, that's not the only song that you mentioned them on. I mean, by name, that that, I, that stuck out to me. But I, I've heard at least one other cut where you mentioned two two brothers that you lost. Is And um, I'm going to guess that you was talking about the same two brothers when you... yeah. Yeah, that was um that was a hard time for me because I lost them within like a couple of weeks of each other, and um it was just like it was a big kind of blow to my life. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it was kind of like a way to fall out of life for sure. Mm-hmm. And then I went from you know everything changes. You know what I'm saying? Everything changed after that. Like the semantics of everything. You know what I mean? Because everybody's you know everybody moves differently. Everybody goes through their own thing. And what what's what's next for G4 Jag? Nine Eleven. Coming up, uh, notify. It's about to get spooky outside. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what's up then. Well, I don't even want to make the announcement just yet, but um, I guess well, I guess I did already. But um, I got a project fully produced by Me Fucks coming uh, September 11th. Shout out to Me Fucks. And, uh, yeah, salute to Me Fucks. Um, fucking, we, we made we made some fucking dope shit, man. <laughs> and, I, I pray, you know, I can't wait to get out of here, this shit, because um, this shit's special, you know what I mean? And I think it's going to surprise a lot of people, but um, it, 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 it it's going to be so dope that, like, man, it's just wait for it. That's all I'm going to say, wait for it, you know what I mean? 
That's what's up. I ran through all of these questions. I'm gonna tell you something. I was I was you know finishing this up last night, getting everything in order, and it occurred to me I could have made twelve more pages of questions. That's how every time I listen to a new song, I got more questions. I can't do it all in this one thing. I know you're gonna be back. I hope you will grace us with your presence once again. Um, oh man, I'll be honored, man. I'll be honored. I appreciate, like I said, to lose everybody that's you know supporting my powers and I'm um, supporting your movement too. That's tapping in and listening to this because, um, you know, like I said uh, earlier in the pre part, but I'm gonna say it again. Um, you know, he clearly is, you know, building his own brand and platform and setting a bar right now. So, um, you know, I got me a Mike Powers intro, man. It's in the books, it's in the history books, man. I can't take it back. It's over. <laughs> it's done, it's done. You know what I'm saying? So, be outside, man. Salute to Mike Powers today, by that tap saying the supports. Uh, please get familiar with G4 Jag if yes. you're not. Uh, and if you are, man, stay familiar. Appreciate your support, man. Keep it right just for real, for real. And start, go listen to uh, Still, Still um, Surviving. The Surviving. Still Surviving out now on all digital platforms. That's a fact. Shit go so hard. And so, absolutely. And then after this, as we sign off, then we're going to do something. Because I need you to do me a drop. Well, I got dope drops coming up. But right after we sign this off, we're going to do a dope drop. But G4 Jag. Thank you so much for blessing us with your presence on the platform. It was an honor for me. I truly appreciate it. And I know you got big things coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, if you didn't catch it in the beginning, this has been a conversation with the voice of God, <laughs> G4 Jag. And we was lucky to have him. Uh, thank you, sir. And as always, I'm Mike Powers. I'm out.